Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About That, a Union University podcast. My name is Fran Thomas and I'm one of the co-hosts for this show. And you know what? You guys, we're missing Ted Cluck, aren't we? It is time to get him back. He's been really busy and our schedules just have not aligned. But guess what? I can't say this because I haven't asked him yet, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going out on a limb here. He's going to be on the next show as we wrap up 2023. Dear Ted, you're going to be on the next show. You just don't know it yet. (laughs) But you guys are in for such a fun treat. This is episode number eight. And in the recording, I called it number seven. So there you go. It's actually number eight. And this is a wonderful, wonderful conversation between myself and Becca Holloway. She is the director of the EDGE program here at Union. And if you don't know Becca, well, guess what? You're in for such a treat, and you are going to love and appreciate her story, who she is, and what she's doing on the campus of Union through the EDGE program. And if you don't know Becca and you don't know the EDGE program, sit back, enjoy, be encouraged, and just uh, be so grateful for who she is and what she's doing here because I sure am. Okay, enjoy the show. We're so very thankful for you. Okay. Hello, Becca Holloway. Welcome to the recording studio. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. You know what's fun is I've been thinking about the, the previous episodes and um, I don't know, whatever episode number, I think this is episode six that we're actually recording. No, 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 sorry, this is episode seven. Okay. Episode cool. seven. We've had Eva Gray Spadell, we've had Emma Kate Hare, and now we have Rebecca Holloway. Now, Eva Grace, I call her Eva Grace, other people call her Eva. Emma Kate Hare, I call her Emma Kate, lots of people call her Emma. Rebecca Holloway is your name, but I've always called you Becca. Do people call you Rebecca or Um, are you Becca? In a professional setting, I typically go by Rebecca because it's my legal name. So that's how I sign it. So I always write Rebecca, but those that really know me and I'm close with call me Becca. Okay. Well, you're Becca. I, it's never crossed my mind to call you Rebecca. But the fact that we have these guests on here with these names that some people call you this, some people call you this. Listen, my name is Fran, and you call me Fran. I answered it whatever people call me. Other than I haven't ventured into, like, Reba yet, so I probably wouldn't um, necessarily look up for that. But Becca, Rebecca, however, okay. Robertson, Holloway, I'll, I'll turn and look to whatever. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to call you Becca. Great. For the sake of the show, I'm going to call you Becca. Okay, Miss Becca Holloway, what do you want our listeners to know about you? What are some fun things um, that you can say about yourself that don't have anything to do with what we're going to get into in a minute? Okay, I am from Clarksville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Shout out Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee, Mm -hmm. right outside of Nashville. Um, I am one of six kids. Mercy. Um... How about a shout out to your parents? Shout out to my parents. Um, I have one biological sister and four adopted siblings Mm. that came into our family through foster care and adoption um, my senior year at Union. So Mm -hmm. one of Mm -hmm. six. I'm an Enneagram seven. Mm -hmm. So am I. With a strong eight wing, I say. (gasps) So am I, Becca. (laughs) Y'all just might as well get ready because here we go. Here we go. (laughs) I am the proud wife of Trenton Holloway. We met here at Union. I'm a dog mom to Oakley. And we we treat her much like our yeah. daughter. Yeah. And um, I love puzzles. I love to read. I am a current PhD student. Mm. I'm getting mm. my PhD in special education. Mm. So um, my life looks a lot like work, school, work, school. Yeah. Work, school, school, work. Yeah. Okay. Before we dive into all the things that I want to talk about, can I just say that um, I work with Trenton Holloway, your husband, and I think he's one of the funniest humans alive. I do too. I just, what a hidden, precious, fun <laughs> gem I have found in him. And um, he literally makes me laugh every single day. Me too. <laughs> if you get the pleasure of getting him in one of those, you know, comical moments, uh-huh. he tells good stories. Uh-huh. He has a great sense of humor uh-huh. and he's a lot of fun to be around. Yeah. Very quick. Oh, yes. Very quick. He says things that I'm like, that is so funny right now. Can we just 
keep talking about that because I also just am so curious what's going to come out of his mouth next. Right. Oh, mercy. Okay. Well, the reason why I wanted you to be on this show was for a couple of couple of reasons, actually. One, I want people to hear a little bit about your union story and then and then what you do here at Union. I think who you are in this concept, you just have this beautiful um, story to Union, but also, yeah, you're like Emma Kate in the fact that you now work here, but also that, I, I believe, that journey is just, it's different mm -hmm. and maybe surprising and a little bit unexpected. Definitely surprising and unexpected to me. Okay. So. Okay. So let's start with, um, well, I know this probably isn't super appropriate, but for people that don't know you, I need them to know how old you are. I am, if my if my students are listening, skip <laughs> to the next 15 seconds. I'm 27. Okay. I turn 28 um, in like a week. Okay. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. So you're 27 years old. That helps the audience kind of visualize, yep. understand, and picture who it is we're talking to. Yeah. Okay, so how did you find Union? You came here as a student. I want to know how you found us, what your major was, all the things. Absolutely. So um, I'm going to back up a little bit and say that I started walking with the Lord in about 2011. I was saved as a child, but I mean like walking relationship with the Lord rededicated my life um, my sophomore year of high school. Okay. And soon after, I started working with people with disabilities at a summer camp called Special Friends Camp that's sponsored by the Tennessee Baptist adult homes and the Tennessee Baptist Convention at that time is what it was called. Um, and the my story of walking with the Lord and working with people with disabilities is very interconnected because before I was working with people with disabilities, one, for my job, I wanted to work in fashion. And it was um, going into that camp that I, that was my plan was working in fashion. And then I worked for a week and I'd never worked with people with disabilities. And I was like, I think this is what I'm going to do for forever. Mm -hmm. And it was this transition in my life of stopping what Becca wanted mm. and seeing what does the Lord want for my life and kind of surrendering that. And so that was a journey of two or three years. It's a continuous journey right. that we're surrendering what we want and surrendering our lives to what the Lord wants in our lives. And so um, I was going to go to UT Chattanooga and I was wanting to go there because one of my friends was going to go there. We were going to live together. I applied and they reached out to me and let me know that I needed to submit citizenship papers. <laughs> and I was like, that's weird. I don't have citizenship papers because I was born in Mississippi. And they essentially like implied that I had misrepresented myself on the application and lied, I guess for some sort of benefit. I don't know what the benefits are of that, but I was like, um, I'm from Tennessee. I was born in Mississippi I don't have citizenship papers so I kind of was then like hold on pause like is this a roadblock on my journey to college maybe I mm. need to consider like is this where I want to go and so I had a really good friend whose mom went to union a lot of their family went to union and I began I just kind of was entertaining the idea of Christian higher education. So um, I toured Union. I came on the most enchanted weekend, like the most beautiful fall weekend. It was mm. the last, either last weekend in October, early November, just the most beautiful weekend. It was just I had the most amazing time. I met with Dr. Singleton because I was coming as a special ed major. And and 10 years ago, when, when you wanted to work with people with disabilities, it was like, oh, so you're going to be a special ed major. Those mm. were synonymous. Mm -hmm. And um, so I came here. I knew that this was where I, where God wanted me to be. I was, um, I was involved in Young Life as a high schooler. I knew I wanted to be a Young Life leader. I was interested in being involved in Greek life, and I wanted a Christian higher education experience. And Union checked all of my boxes, and so I knew this was the place that the Lord had for me. It was very clear that this is where I wanted to. This was where God had me, and um, I found out that day that I was accepted into Union. And so it was kind of just like early. I was. I feel like early in the process I knew like this was what yeah. I was going to do and I never really wavered on that so I came to Union as a freshman special education major I took one education class and was like I just don't know that this is what <laughs> I want to do I'm just not so sure that this is the right fit and so I changed my major to social work and then ended up graduating with a degree in psychology and I went on to Baylor University for my master's of education in applied behavior analysis um, and the Lord opened so many doors for me to go to Baylor and do that um, but I 
he taught me a lot in that season. Um, about halfway through my first year, I was like, I'm doing well in my classes. I like who I'm working with and I like what I'm doing okay, but I don't think this is what God mm. has called me to do. And that was a really hard season mm. because mm-hmm. I was like, it doesn't make sense because I had a full ride to Baylor. I had a graduate assistantship that paid for our living expenses. And so everything made sense. It was working with people with disabilities. Everything made sense on paper, but in actuality, I was miserable. Mm. And I was like, I'm just going to finish because it would be embarrassing to drop out of graduate school. And the Lord really convicted me that that was a very selfish and prideful way to go about it because by finishing out of obligation and out of pride, I was being disobedient to his plan for my life. And it was kind of like this aha moment. Um, I discovered this program at Dallas Baptist University, and it was a master's of Christian, no, master's of children's ministry with a concentration in special needs ministry. And it was like, there is a place a vocation for people that are interested in working with people with disabilities in the church. And um, prior, I had never really considered that as a vocation. It Mm. had always been kind of a side thing. Mm Mm-hmm. So I dropped out of my program at Baylor, immediately started the program at Dallas Baptist. And and that time, Trenton and I moved um, apartments, and the, we moved right next to a school. And it was a high school. And I just was like, I wonder if they would hire me to work as an aide in one of their classrooms, in one of their special ed classes. Because I was still interested in working with people with disabilities. That's never stopped. And so um, I basically went to the school one day and was like, hey, are you guys looking for any aides? And they were like, absolutely. Like, And so I basically got hired, started, and I worked in that classroom for about a week and this wonderful person that um, just saw something in me she asked me after a week of working there would I be interested in becoming a teacher and I was like well I'm not qualified to be a teacher because my degree's in psychology and she let me know about alternative certification programs and so um, I ended up while I was in my first semester of my master's program at DBU I was became a fully certified special education teacher and so wow Um, I just thought that, and that really, whenever I talk about being a SPED teacher, it really just fell in my lap. That was never my plan. As I said, my freshman year, I was like, I just don't think that's for me. Um, But the Lord really blessed my time as a special ed teacher. I taught in Waco when we lived there. I taught in Northwest Indiana when we lived there. And then I taught whenever we moved back to Jackson. And um, so my career had been in special education. My degree and passion was in ministry for people with disabilities. Mm. And then the Lord and his kindness brought me back to union um to lead the edge program and um one part that i because i was more so talking about my educational journey the i was here when the edge program started my freshman year at union they called us into the i think it was mcafee and let us know that in the fall they were going to be launching this program and it was a college program for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities immediately i was like i want in i Mm. whatever they needed i'll do it i lived with one of our students as a roommate i worked as a mentor was very involved in the EDGE program, and it had a profound impact on my life. And looking back on it, in fact, it changed my life. And so the Lord used all of these things, all of these, what I felt like I was getting set on different paths Mm -hmm. and going down the wrong path and making mistakes. He was pruning me for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And so now um, I always say I'm so blessed because the EDGE program is a good mix of special education and ministry for people with disabilities. And I get to minister to their family as well and advocate for that my students in the EDGE program, they're made in the image of God. They are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God has them here on this earth for a plan and a purpose. Mm. And we're here to help them learn what is that plan and that purpose Mm -hmm. and equip them with the tools to leave from this place and to go and do just like anybody else is. Yes. Listen, I remember remember when the EDGE program was born. I remember thinking, oh, wow, I can't believe that – I've never thought about this or considered that students, people, young adults with disabilities can have a college experience. Like, I I don't know how many programs are like this in the country, but the fact that Jennifer Graves um, began this program, how many years ago would that have been? It's, we'll be... It was in 2015. So this is our ninth cohort. It's been about, we're about, we're about to turn nine. Okay. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And so took this, this passion, this desire, and it, here it is, like you just said, nine cohorts in is absolutely incredible. Okay. 
I love, love, love when we have perspective and can look back over a period of time, which really isn't that long. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you were a student here to, to today, like watching the Lord, being able to see clearly how he was putting this puzzle together, weaving this thread in your life. And I think that's so often, so much of the time we're headed in one direction and we just feel like this is just feels weird. This isn't right. I can't believe this is what I'm doing. Am I supposed to do this? And then all of a sudden we wake up one day and we're like, oh, I clearly see what the Lord has been doing because I knew you as a student when you were when you were a mentor um, for the Edge program, and so to see you now as the director is just absolutely fabulous, wild, crazy, incredible, and I'm just so very thankful and proud of you for you know, just continuing on and letting the Lord move you, shift you, teach you, put you in different places. And you just think, goodness gracious, oh, he does have a plan. He knows exactly what he's doing. And I just, I love, 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 love it. Okay. So let's, let's consider Kali, the, you, that whole story is absolutely beautiful. And I guarantee you people are at the point where they go, I want to rewind and listen to that again because it really is profound. Absolutely, absolutely profound. Okay, how in the world did you stumble upon and find your way back to Jackson being, is the, I don't even know, I'm sitting here calling you the director of the EDGE program. Is that even the correct, what is your title? That is the title. Okay. (laughs) How did you find yourself in this position and let's, we'll go from there. Okay, so at we, 27 years of age, people. At 27. <laughs> well, so to back up a little bit, we, Trenton graduated from Baylor in 2020. And um, the opportunity on the table for him to work in higher education was in Valparaiso, Indiana, at Valparaiso University. And we just went. Basically, we were telling the students that were at our house last night, we basically just packed all of our stuff up and went sight unseen to Northwest Indiana. And we're very thankful for our time there. The, my story is a lot of that the Lord uses every single season um, for his good and his glory. So um, we were there for a short season and um, Trent and I had always known that we wanted to come back to Union. We didn't know it would be this soon, but there was an opening um, at Union when we had lived in Valpo for about six months and we kind of were reflecting on like, do we like where we're at right now? Is this where we want to be? And everything we liked about Valpo had to do with living near Chicago. We oh. liked the Trader Joe's <laughs> in Chicago. I liked the shopping in Chicago. Um, but it was kind of like we were um, we were feeling led elsewhere. And so the job opened up for Trenton at Union, and he was hired. And so we moved that spring back to Jackson, and it felt like we were moving home. Mm. After, you know, when you're 22, three years feels like a long time, but truly it wasn't that long. But we right. were away from Jackson for three years and it felt like so much had changed but it felt like we were coming home Mm. because this is where our lives started together Mm -hmm. our sister-in-law and um at that time her boyfriend but now my brother-in-law they both were here as students and so it just felt really right and the Lord just opened so many doors so when we moved to Jackson I was finishing up my master's at DBU and I really wanted to work in ministry for people with disabilities in a church full-time. That was my hope and my dream. But we were coming out of COVID and Mm. churches weren't really looking to add Mm. on new programs. And there were still people that weren't coming back to church yet. They still hadn't rebounded yet. And so really the only opportunity was to work in the schools. And I was okay with that, Mm. that, you know, I'm like, okay, Lord, if that's where you have me, um, I was really, really had to submit when I ended up working at a middle school. When I moved, I'd worked (laughs) at high schools. And when I moved I was like I'll work at a high school I'll work at an elementary school I will not work at a middle school but I I interviewed at that middle school and had an incredible interview and the Lord really used that year in my life and I had re I'd signed my contract for the next year and thought I'll teach here for the foreseeable future I was Mm. laying down roots and was was fine with that at this point I was starting to get involved with Young Life Capernaum and was kind of making some waves towards um, ministry for people with disabilities at fellowship and so I was like maybe this is what he wants me to do I'm gonna be a special ed teacher during the week and then I'm gonna do with my free time I'm gonna do some ministry opportunities and so 
Um, and I'd never really even considered the edge program. I never knew that Jennifer was going to move on. And so I, I just, it was never on my radar, but then it was like, how was this not what I wanted all along? Mm. Um, and maybe that was just the Lord being kind of like, if, I wasn't having to like um, sit in something that was I really really wanted but wasn't able to have at that moment. Um, but now I can confidently say this is I mean it, at least in my perspective right now this is my dream job. Mm. I the Lord has just just been so so kind and so I went through that interview process and I started. Um, I got to end on a really high note. I taught summer school that year and then let them know that I was going to be moving on and um, started at Union in August of 2022. And so in some ways my my experience as a mentor and a roommate, I knew a lot about the EDGE program, Um, but then there was a lot of stuff I didn't know that was going on behind the scenes because there's a lot of work that we do in our offices that no one knows about. And so, um, but the Lord has been so kind in those processes and and the team that we've been able to build with the EDGE program has been just such a gift because I could not do it without the people that I work with. Mm-hmm. I serve the most amazing families, the most amazing students. I have the best colleagues. And so we're just very, God has been very, very kind to us. Mm. It's so encouraging, you guys. Is there a, um, I don't know if it's a story that you want to share, just something when you think about this is this is particularly rewarding. This part of your job, this is what you absolutely love mm-hmm. to be a part of, to see, to witness. Give us some idea of that. Because I think in our minds, like just just knowing that students with um, some sort of disability have an opportunity to be on a college campus and to be in that environment, like instantly you just go, oh, that's incredible. That's all good in and of itself. But let's dial down just a little bit to tell us something that is, I don't know, favorite memory, what you love, what what is something that you get to see that is, we're not going to know unless you tell us. Right. Two things come to mind. Um, Being the director, I get to be very involved in the admissions process. And one of the interview questions I ask the students that are applying to the EDGE program is, tell me about your friends. Mm. And um, unfortunately, and it's not the story for everyone, but unfortunately we do have a lot of students that will tell us, I don't have any friends. Mm. I, I... and, and they don't necessarily know how to articulate. And so when the student leaves the interview and goes with one of the staff members, I sit with the family and we can reflect and the parents can help me kind of catch a vision as far as what friendships have looked like in their child's life. And a lot of times um, the story is similar to that they um, have a hard time making meaningful connections with their peers. Mm. And so, but then getting to fast forward six months later, someone that's in the EDGE program, that um, we're going on a community outing and we do these community outings to set up social opportunities for them. We put in all the labor of setting these things up and all they have to do is just spend time Mm. with one another, make memories, have things to talk about. And that's a big part of why we do those is working on social skills and working on creating meaningful relationships with their peers. And that's peers within the EDGE program and peers outside of the EDGE program with typical undergraduate students. That's a huge just blessing to get to see these students come alive and flourish Mm. in a Christ-centered environment that is a huge why for me. Another one, um, our, our program, the EDGE program is employment training, daily living skills, godly focus, educational enrichment. And employment training is huge. Our students work on an on-campus internship their first year, and then the goal is for them to have paid employment in the community their second year. And we have a student that works at Chuck E. Cheese, and we got to go and see him last year working at Chuck E. Cheese. And we knew, it was beyond a shadow of a doubt, God created him for this moment, Mm -hmm. that his personality, his disposition is perfect Mm -hmm. for Chuck E. He is in the (laughs) Chuck E. costume. He doesn't just work at Chuck E. Cheese. He is Chuck E. And so getting to see him do the thing that he does around campus like give people two thumbs up in the Chucky costume because that's Chucky's signature move yeah that was such a kindness of God that he helped open those doors he sent this student to our program he had a manager at Chuck E. Cheese set aside that was like definitely we would love to have him Mm. that's the good stuff in Mm -hmm. our program to Mm -hmm. get to see a student use the skills that they've learned in our program and implement them in a workplace and then get to spread 
Christ's love and joy in his workplace among his coworkers, that is more than I could ever dream mm. for each and every one of our students. Becca Holloway, that's every single person. Like I think that's what every single person wants, craves, made for, Absolutely, need. Yes. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what you're doing, who you are, how the Lord made you. It all, we all have a purpose and just, we forget that. And, and those, those things, those experiences, the friendship side of things, while also um, being equipped to go out and have a job and perform and work and, and be a bright light, like that's all of us. Absolutely. It's all of us. We're made for that. I cannot imagine how fulfilling that is because we all long for community and we all long to have um, employment that, you know, is meaningful for us. Mm-hmm. So how much fun is that? Okay, what are some of the challenges? What are some of just the harder sides of of this program or the families or the work? Like, give us an example there. Yeah, there are definitely challenges that come with students with intellectual and developmental disabilities living on a college campus. Um, And I would say a challenge that we see is we have to be really specific about like, hey, this is the expectation here. Um, Coming from high school to living independently on a college campus can be you know, challenging for anyone, right. especially the students in the EDGE program, they just need a little bit more guidance. And so we do have to be really specific with them about the expectations. Um, and that's something that the Lord has blessed us with, that we have tools and our team is very dynamic and we have a lot of different perspectives. We have two males and two females on the staff. So like we're able to think about the different needs of those students, male and female. We're also, we have special education majors or people that have a degree in special education. We have people that are in social work, people that are in business. And so we're able to look at situations from a lot of different perspectives, which is a blessing from the Lord that we're able to, to be able to have that dynamic perspective. So Mm -hmm. there are challenges, but the Lord has equipped us Mm -hmm. and given us, we have the tools that we need to be successful. So how many students are in the program? How many students are in a cohort? We take anywhere from eight to 12. Currently we have 18 students. So we have eight and each cohort Cohort eight is here right now, cohort nine. And then we have two students in the bridge program. And so bridge is where they are. The goal is for them to be working in the community 20 to 40 hours. um, And then they're living on campus and still have our support. And so that's kind of a transitional year before they live completely independently and are working independently. So we have two in that program. So 18 total. Are most of the students from Tennessee or do you, are they from mostly from the south and how do people how do people find I mean we're still we're still kind of baby we're still a brand new program so how many how many if they live in middle Tennessee are are there other schools that have this type of program and you know how do they find us we're one of nine in the state of Tennessee and Tennessee's inclusive higher ed um, realm, or we call it inclusive post-secondary education program. So IPSI, um, we're one of nine IPSI programs. Um, but we're one of a few, one of two in Tennessee that, um, are Christian programs. So if you're looking for a Christian program, a Christ-centered education, but for inclusive post-secondary education programs, we're one of two. Um, people hear about us from Think College, which is the coordinating center for inclusive post-secondary education in America. And, um, we also do a lot of recruiting with special education directors in the state. We do a lot of transition fairs. There's lots of resources out there nowadays even more so that's grown within the last three years Mm. of how we're telling people about our programs we've had students from all over the states typically I would say about 80 percent of our students come from Tennessee and there's some funding tied with being in Tennessee so that makes that a little bit more appealing um but because there's some state specific stuff and that's kind of across the board right but um some people want that Christ-centered education and so they're going to send to to union because that's their focus and that's really important for them yeah okay talk to us a little bit about um I think I'm saying this right a night to show Shine? Yes. Tell us about this because I think once you give a little bit of brief context, people are going to be like, oh, I know about this. I just didn't know that th- maybe that's what it's called. Yes. So the EDGE program for the past 
eight years has done Royal Ball and we which was a prom night experience for people with disabilities and it had been for high schoolers in the community and last year someone was like would y'all be willing to open it up to adults in the community because there's not a ton yeah. for our adults with disabilities in the community I, I got my start with adults with people for adults with disabilities and so I immediately was like oh yes like we're already doing this let's go ahead and invite more people in and so after we did that we were someone had approached me about would we be willing to do a night to shine and night to shine is the tim tebow foundation's prom night experience for people with disabilities so if you're familiar with the royal ball that the edge program put on the edge program is now doing night to shine and it's in partnership with fellowship bible church which we're really thankful for and really excited about so i love it so much it's gonna be just a wonderful night what we had a committee meeting the other day and we talk about lots of different details and there's lots of planning that goes into night to shine but i left with the reminder of that we want to celebrate these individuals for exactly who God created them to be. And if they get fed and get to dance the night away and get told that, that mm -hmm. they are a precious creation of the King and that they are valued and loved for exactly who God created them to be, all of the other frill, I'm, I'm happy for it, but those are the most important yeah. things. And when is this? February 9th. Coming up. It'll be here before we know it. It will. Goodness gracious. Okay, absolutely. This is what I love, listeners, about Becca Holloway, is um, I think without a doubt, you can clearly hear her articulate with joy the ministry, the work, the program, the lives, the families that you get to be a part of, that you get to serve, that you get to pour into and, and equip them to do all the things that you want them to be able to do. But also listeners, what I need you to know about Becca Holloway is she's no nonsense. And I think that that is a, I don't care who you are, what you're doing in life. You have a beautiful ability to, um, to be so loving and joyful and kind and supportive and all the things. But then also, you know, you, you're going to draw that line and, and you don't play when it comes to that line. <laughs> You want to know my formula for that? <laughs> Please tell us. Years ago, I was at Fellowship Bible Church as a student, and it was a guest pastor or guest preacher, and I can't remember. I, I Truthfully, I don't know who it was, but um, he talked about that Jesus modeled so eloquently speaking the truth in love. Yes. And he had this triangle of that, and I'm a visual person, if we speak only the truth and no love it's harsh mm -hmm. and if we speak only love but we don't put that truth in there it was just fluff and they didn't actually get what they needed but if you speak the truth in love as jesus modeled for us they that's the kindest thing you can do they feel love but then they also got what they needed to know and so when i talk with um with different faculty or staff or students about working with students with disabilities, that's what I tell them is speak the truth in love because we want, they're here to learn mm. how to be a college student. And so sometimes that takes some, um, you know, we have to have some hard conversations, but when you speak the truth in love, they're able to get what you need to know and they don't feel thorned by it. Right. It's, you know, it's a discipline, but it's kind. Right. And that's the kindest thing that we can do. And Jesus was the ultimate model of that. So that's my formula. For, I love it. I'm no nonsense sense I draw the line but I speak the truth in yes love. you do and and that's what I think anybody that knows you they see that and deeply appreciate okay let's end with this you don't know that I'm going to ask you this but you can answer it if you were to look at the landscape of the church of higher ed if you were to like dream big and be like oh man what a day it would be if this was happening or this was occurring for those families, for this, the children, the students themselves that have special needs, what, what would you like to say, oh man, in 20 years or however many years, it doesn't even have to be that long or however long, what would you want to see happening? I would love to see in higher ed and in churches that People with unique abilities or disabilities or however you want to call it, they have a meaningful role in your entity's 
culture and community. And that's what we're doing here in the EDGE program is that we are inclusive. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's a buzzword, but what we are meaning is that we're finding meaningful places for them to be a part of what's going on here and to take place. And sometimes that takes some flexible thinking of like, how can we, because we don't want them to just be doing, you know, just get stuck somewhere. Right. But looking that that be the culture and that just be muscle memory that you look around at different events or your ministries, how can we include someone else in this? Where we have this person that wants to serve, they have gifts, where could they be meaningfully included in our church, higher education institution, place of employment, whatever? How could we bring them in and they play a meaningful role Mm. in this community? That is the hope and the joy that I have for each and every individual that I work with. I love that. And you, you said we need to have more flexible thinking Mm -hmm. and we could do a whole nother episode on that but (laughs) I think that we really do need to think outside of what we're what we're accustomed to and begin to look around at all the places we go the churches that we're a part of the places we serve and begin to to look and take in and and wonder hmm do we have students People, families, a part of serving meaning in meaningful ways. Are they there? Where are they? Um, And I think that that just helps us creatively think. Um, So, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I am so, so appreciative for the work that you're doing here on the campus, but then ultimately sending these students out into meaningful workplaces and environments and giving them an opportunity to serve just like everybody else. Serve church and society. That's That's part of our mission, just like it is the university's mission. I love it. Well, we're very thankful for you. Thankful for who you are and how you serve the university. And then to go back and consider how the Lord was putting this together as you were a student here when you somehow managed to fill out an application wrong. (laughs) All because of that. I'm very, very thankful for Union University and the part that it's played in my story and the opportunities it's given me. Um, I I thought that as a student that I couldn't be more thankful for Union. Mm. And then I get to serve here as a staff member. And I'm like, I I was just scratching the surface as a student of how blessed I Mm. could be to be here. Mm. So. Uh, I love it so much. Thank you, Becca Holloway. Thank Thank you for all you do. And as always, everybody, thank you for listening to this week's episode of Let's Talk About That. If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to reach out to myself or to Becca. Both of our email addresses will be in the show notes. All right, we'll see you next time. Y'all have a great day. Thank you, Becca Holloway, for who you are and the work and the ministry that you are doing in the lives of the Ed students here at Union. So very thankful for you. Okay, you guys, have you been on campus for a visit? Do you know somebody that needs to come to campus for a visit? They can sign up online. Do that. Go to the website, uu.edu, and just search campus visits. Let me know if you're coming, and I would love to say hi. If you've already been on campus and you're just waiting to apply, guess what? We've got a fee waiver code. You do not have to pay the application fee. Just type in the word TALK, all capital letters, T-A-L-K, and you will not have to pay the application fee. All right, you guys, we're so thankful for you. We're going to finish 2023 with hearts full of gratitude, hope, and joy. All right, Ted Cluck, I'll see you on the next episode. (laughs) Y'all have a great day. We're so thankful for you.